Hello and welcome to Apex Math. Today we are going to look at solving one-step algebra equations and this is appropriate for grades 6 through 9. In Common Core Math, uh, this concept is now being introduced in the sixth grade. It was formally not usually introduced until Algebra 1 in the eighth or ninth grade. So we are going to go ahead. It's not a difficult concept, and it's actually pretty good to start students beginning to grasp it at an earlier age if they are uh, ready. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And let's clear our screen. And let's take a look at first um, some vocabulary. And this is where it's very important that students understand this concept as they begin to do this. Where a lot of teachers just start off with the process and without introducing the vocabulary and the concept behind it. Where this concept just plays a big role as they go through mathematics and it starts right here. So it's a good time to introduce it and get students used to the idea. The term is the inverse. The inverse is a mathematical way of saying the opposite. It's something that undoes another operation. So if we have times, the inverse is divide. If we have plus, the inverse is minus. And this is a big one. If we have a fraction, they need to learn that the inverse is the reciprocal. So if they have not learned those terms yet, then you should go ahead and stop this lesson and introduce to them what the reciprocal of a fraction is. Just briefly, it's a very easy concept. If I have a number, like two-thirds, the reciprocal is just where we flip the numerator and the denominator. So three halves is the reciprocal of two-thirds. So let's do another one. If we have one-fifth, the reciprocal would be five. It's actually five over one, but we can just write that as a plain five. Or if we have 7, then the reciprocal is going to be 1 over 7. Because 7 is really 7 over 1. So when we flip it, we get 1 7. So those are the inverses that we are going to need to use. That times is inverses divide, plus is minus, and vice versa. I should say it goes in both directions. And a fraction's inverse is its reciprocal. All right, so we're going to start off with an easy equation. x plus 5 is equal to 8. And most students will just say, oh, okay, this is the same thing as what plus 5 is equal to 8. And they will try to solve it that way and say, all right, I can think of what is added to 5 that will give me 8, and that is 3. But that is not actually what we want them to do at this point in time. We know they know how to do that, but the problems are going to become more complex where the process of just being able to figure this out in their head is no longer going to work for them. So we want to teach them an algebraic process that's going to work when the problems get more difficult. So we want to teach them this idea of using the inverse to find our answer. And yeah, we're going to start off with ones that we can do on our head, but again, move to eventually more complex ones that using this process over here will not be possible. So we're going to circle the variable. We're going to circle what we're trying to find. We're trying to find what is that value of x, that missing number. And if we look at what is being done to x, x, there is a plus 5 that is being added to x. So we have to now look for the inverse of that operation, the inverse of plus 5. And the inverse of plus 5 is minus 5. It is the opposite operation. So if we have x plus 5 is equal to 8, 
then we are going to go ahead and use that inverse and we're going to line things up so that our inverse is right in line with the number itself. And again, we want to teach students to go ahead and organize their writing in mathematics because that's really important that they be able to do that for success in future math. But if we just subtract 5 from one side of the equation, if we have a bunch of things over here, and we take 5 away from that, then we no longer have the same amount that we started with. So what we need to do is, since there's an equal to here, we need to make sure whatever we do to one side of the equation, we do the exact same thing to the other. So it's a balance board. So if there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items here, and the number eight to match it over there, if we take away five by crossing things off here, then we're going to have to take away five from our number on this side. So this leaves us with three little objects here, and numerically, it leaves us with the number three here. And you can see they're still the same now. So whatever we do to one side of an equal sign, we also need to do to the other. So I'm going to subtract five on this side as well. Inverses cancel each other out. They undo each other. That's the point of using them. And why did we do that? We did that because now this x is here all by himself on this side of the equation. And that's our goal. Our goal is to get x equals something where he is all by himself on the left and there's just a value on the right hand side. So now we have x equals and we do this math on this side, 8 minus 5 and we get 3. So now we have that same number that we could have found much easier just by doing it in our head, but we are not going to use that approach anymore because we are trying to use this idea of inverse and practice it for again when those problems get more difficult. All right, let's try it with a different problem. Let's try x minus 2 is equal to 7. So I am trying to isolate another good word, math word to use. I'm trying to isolate that x. So I look at what's being done to the x. There's a minus 2 away from the x. So what is the inverse of minus 2? The inverse is a plus 2. So that means that I need to do a plus 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to come down here, line it up with my minus 2, and come over here to the other side of the equals and line that one up. This crosses off. That leaves me with an x all by itself on the left. And I get 7 plus 2 is 9. And I have my answer to this problem. All right, we're going to do the next one. The next one is 2x equals 12. So again, we're going to circle the x because that's what we want to isolate. And we have to ask ourselves, what is the relationship between the x and that number that we need to make go away, which is the 2 in this case? Well, there's no sign there. So we need to know when there's no sign between a number and a variable, that that means it's multiplication, even though we don't write it. So what we have is the x is being multiplied by 2. So what is the inverse of that? would be to divide by 2. So I need to take both sides and divide by 2. And again, because I want to line it up, instead of using this symbol, we're going to use a fraction bar. And note that a fraction bar means divide. So that's something to get kids used to, is that's another way to write divide. So I'm going to divide by 2 here, and I'm going to divide by 2 here. These two 2's cross off. And x is equal to 12 divided by 2. 
which is equal to 6. And that's my final answer there. All right, let's go to the next one. And it's good to go through each of the different types of problems. So now we have x over 4 is equal to 9. So let's circle the variable that we're trying to isolate. We have an x. And we ask ourselves, what is the relationship between the variable and the number that we need to get rid of so that x will be all alone on the left-hand side? Well, the relationship is that it is being divided by 4. So the inverse of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4. So we need to multiply both sides by 4. So we have this. And so we're going to do 4 times on both sides. That crosses off the dividing by 4 because they're inverse operations. So then I have x is equal to 9 times 4, 36. All right, and our last problem that we are going to do is probably the most challenging just because students tend to get nervous around fractions. What if we have 2 thirds x equals 12? Well, let's circle the variable. And again, we're going to say, OK, what is being done to the variable? Well, it's being multiplied by 2 thirds. But 2 thirds is a fraction. So yes, it's multiplication, so we could divide. But I prefer to think of it's being multiplied times a fraction. And the inverse of multiplying times a fraction is multiplying times its reciprocal. So that's what we're going to do. It's much easier to do that than to divide. Um, we can talk about that approach as well. But if we have 2 thirds x equals 12, the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. So we're going to come over here and we're going to multiply both sides by 3 halves. Notice cross canceling, your whole fraction just cancels right off. And I'm left with just an x on this side. Here, I'm going to put the 12 over the 1. I'm going to cross cancel. 12, 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 12 6 times. And 6 times 3 is 18. So I get x is equal to 18. If you hadn't noticed the reciprocal and you just saw the multiplication, then you could have said, well, I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is division. So I'm going to divide by 2 thirds. That would also work. I divide by 2 thirds. So I end up with 12 divided by 2 thirds, which means that it's just an extra step here. Dividing by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. So I end up with the same problem that I ended up with here if I'd remembered in the beginning that the inverse of multiplying by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal. And I just think it looks a little prettier than having 12 over 2 thirds, because then you have a number over a fraction, and students just get more freaked out about that. So here, again, we end up with that same situation. So we divide 1 here, 6 here, 6 times 3 is 18. So we get the same answer either way. But I much prefer this approach and would encourage you to work with your student using the reciprocal fraction approach. Um, I find it comes in handy with lots of future math as well. So we have worked on adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and fraction. So you should make up student uh, practice problems 
with each of these types of problems for your child to do where they are using the inverse operation and they are lining things up appropriately and practicing. Um, you can make them harder by adding, if they're ready, adding decimals in here, making them work with fractions. So you have x plus 1 half equals 9 tenths. Process is still the same. They would have to subtract 1 half from both sides, and then they get to practice doing adding fractions with unlike denominators, 9 tenths minus 1 half. So there's all sorts of um, different types of problems that you can do, uh, but have the students work on lining things up properly and just using that inverse property. So come back and visit us for our next lesson on two-step um, solving algebraic equations. They will be coming soon. And remember to please like us at Apex Math. We really do appreciate it, your support. And if you would like uh, any specific lessons that your child is struggling with, we are happy to make uh, some lessons just for you. Uh, put a note of what you'd like us to do in the comments, and we will see if we can get to it. Thank you very much for visiting us at Apex Math.